Hey everybody and welcome to this video. I'm Inkslaura123 and this is going to be a book haul video. I've got some secondhand books and in this video I'm going to show you them and tell you about them and yeah, hope you enjoy watching. If you do, please click like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. That would be awesome. And hey, don't forget to smash the notification bell to all notifications then you can find out when I've uploaded new videos also when I'm doing live streams which I do need to do soon I haven't really been live streaming that much recently but I promise I promise I will be live again like you know really soon okay so yeah some of these books I've got for myself to read some of them I've got to sell on eBay and some of the books I've got to read myself and then sell on eBay <laughs> so yeah um but I'm really excited to show you these books. Like I, I love talking about books. I love doing book videos. I know this channel is a kind of mix match of all different types of videos. But when I talk about books, that's when I'm like most passionate. Because it's like, you know, one of my big hobbies in my life. And I, I love reading and, you know, anything bookish. I'm just, you know, all over it. Um, so I hope you enjoy watching the book themed videos. Um, just before I show you uh, the book here, which there's quite a lot of them on this pile, I just want to give a shout out to three booktubers who I have been watching so much lately. Uh, the first one is Kit Kats Can Read. I've been watching her for absolutely years. She's amazing. We have like literally the same taste in books pretty much. Like she's just awesome. I love watching her videos. I love when she does live streams. She's just a great, great, great person. Like she seriously is awesome. So go check out Kit Kats Can Read's channel. Also, I've been watching a lot of Books and Bargains, another awesome person. Like she's so lovely and sweet. And I just, I don't know, I feel really like happy when I watch her videos. She's very like calming and I love how passionate she is about reading and stuff. And once again, we have like quite similar taste in books as well. And she also does a lot of videos where she talks about bargains that she's got from charity shops which you know i love as well so yeah go check out books and bargains and also go and check out pages with page who i only discovered like in the last few months so it's quite a recent channel but oh my god like, i literally fell in love with her channel instantly she's so fun she's like so down to earth and i just i love hearing her talking about books um, she just she's just great I love her channel so much so um, all of the three booktubers that I've just mentioned I'll put the links to their channels down below go check them out show them some love and honestly I promise you you'll love their videos like they're really really awesome people okay so let's get started I've got a big pile of books here so I'm going to try and get through them as, as quick as I can um, need my glasses got my my bench glasses case here I love this glasses case anyway thought I'd say that so the first book I want to show you is for me and um yeah I I love this author it's by Becky Albertelli and it's called Kate in Waiting really cool cover as well so I've literally read all of her books and uh, I'm really excited to read this one so let's have a look yeah so we've had Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda love that and love the film as well love Simon was brilliant then I read the upside of unrequited and Leah on the offbeat um then oh yeah she did a book with Adam Silvera what if it's us and oh this is the one I really really loved yes no maybe so oh that was so good um but yeah she's she's a really really good author her books are really fun but also like really sweet and emotional as well but anyway I love I love her books so this is her latest one, and uh, I'll read the back to you. It says, Anderson likes this boy. Anderson really likes this boy, but I really like this boy too. And it's all turning out to be a little more complicated than I thought it would be. Contrary to popular belief, best friends Kate and Anderson are not, sorry, are not codependent. Carpooling to and from theatre rehearsals, environmentally sound and efficient. Consulting each other on every single life decision, basic good judgment pining for the same guy from afar shared crushes are more fun anyway but when their long distance crush matt olsen shows up at their school everything goes off script turns out communal crushes aren't so fun when real feelings are involved this one might even bring the curtains down on kate and anderson's friendship so yeah it says here fall in love with the newest novel from the rom-com queen becky albertelli this sounds so good and uh, as i say um kit kats can read who i mentioned before has been reading this and she's been saying it's really good so um yeah i'm quite happy with that 
Okay, now the next book, I have had so much blooming trouble getting, literally, uh, I've, I've wanted this book for like about a year, and I finally picked it up, finally, uh, this is uh, by TJ Clune, The House in the Gru, I've got to say this right, The House in the Grulian Sea, is that how you say that? The Grulian Sea, loving the cover as well, by the way, um, so yeah, I'd, I'd heard about this book ages ago, and I was having real difficulty getting it, and um, I got it. Is the, is the end result to that story couldn't get it got it <laughs> so this just sounds so good and i don't know why there's so much trouble getting it in the united kingdom like it, it's a massive bestseller in the states and stuff but here in the uk we're like mm, hard to get but i finally got it so it says a magical island a dangerous task a burning secret uh linus linius is that linius Lin i'd say Lin linius linius yeah linius baker is a by the book caseworker in the department in charge of magical youth at 40 he lives in a tiny house with a devious cat and his old records for company but his quiet life is about to change linius is summoned by extremely upper management and given a curious and highly classified assignment travel to an orphanage on a distant island and determine whether six dangerous magical children are so dangerous in fact that they're likely to bring about the end of days. When Linnaeus arrives at the strangest of islands, he's greeted by a series of mysterious figures, the greatest mystery of which is Arthur Parnius, I think that is, Arthur Parnius, the master of the orphanage. As Linnaeus and Arthur grow closer, Linnaeus discovers the master would do anything to keep the children safe, even if it means the world has to burn, or worse, the secret comes to life. Ooh. It says here that this book is enchanting, it's a love story, masterfully told, um, the profound experience of discovering an unlikely family in an unexpected place and realising that family is yours. Honestly, this book has had such like rave reviews and I, I finally have it. I'm really happy that I f finally got it after that time. Okay, so the next book I picked up in a charity shop for 50p, like bargain or what? So, um, unfortunately, because it's secondhand, it is a little bit kind of dirty looking and stuff, but this is the sprayed edge version, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I wonder if this is a proof copy, actually. Oh, it is, yeah. I just, just saw that. I was going to say, hmm, maybe it's a proof copy, and then it says, yeah, uncorrected proof copy. Oh, that's cool. Aha, I've got the proof copy of it. Um, yeah, so this is by Holly Bourne, who I think is an absolutely amazing author. I love her books. I mean, there's been a couple of her books that I've been a bit like, mm, they're okay. But overall, I really love her writing style and her characters and stuff. So, um, yeah, I think my favourite book from Holly Bourne has to be uh, The Places I've Cried in Public. That book, like, oh my God, that book really touched me so much. I love that book. Anyway, but this is, um, I think it's like her first adult novel that she did, because normally she's a YA author. So I think this is like the first kind of adult one she did. Every time I film a book video, the phone rings, like, there you go. <laughs> Why does it always ring when I'm filming a book video? Anyway, um, but yeah, this is called How Do You Like Me Now? And yeah, it's a proof copy, uh, proof copy, which I didn't even realise. It says, people can't stop talking about this book. Well, hopefully it's because it's really good. Right, here we go. Um, There's no doubt that Tori is winning the game of life. She's inspired millions of women to stick two fingers up at convention with her best-selling memoir. And she has the perfect relationship to boot. But Tori Bailey has been living a lie. Everyone around her is getting married and having babies, but her long-term boyfriend won't even talk about getting engaged. And when her best friend Dee, her plus one, the only person who understands the madness, falls in love, suddenly Tori is in terrifying danger of being left behind. When the world tells you to be one thing and turning 30 brings with it a loud ticking clock, it takes courage to walk your own path. It's time for Tori to practice what she's preached. But the question is, is she brave enough? Yeah, as I say, like, this sounds really good and... Um, yeah, it's pretty cool that I've got a proof copy. Right, okay, so that's that one. The next one I have got um, to sell on eBay because um, this is secondhand, but like, well, to me, that looks really good condition. Like, if I sell secondhand books on eBay, I don't put them as new, I put them as like new if, like, they're in really good condition kind of thing. And I'm definitely going to sell this as like new because, as you can see, it's, well, like new. Um, I've already got this book on my bookcase. Um, and it's by Sally Rooney. It's called Conversations with Friends. I haven't read it yet, but I have got it. And um, 
yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting because otherwise I wouldn't have bought, bought it for myself. So let me tell you what it's about. Uh, Francis is 21 years old, cool-headed and observant, a student in Dublin and an inspiring writer. At night, she performs spoken word with her best friend, Bobby, who used to be her girlfriend. Uh, when they're interviewed and they're befriended by Melissa, a well-known journalist who is married to Nick, an actor, they enter a world of beautiful houses, dinner parties and holidays, uh, beginning a complex menage a trois, is that right? Menage Couture? <laughs> so, anyway, but, <laughs> but when Francis and Nick get unexpectedly closer, uh, the sharply witty and emotion uh, Francis is forced to honesty, honestly confront her own vulnerabilities for the first time. So, yeah, I read, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the book. What did she do? It's the main one she done. Hold on. It's going to bug me now. Does it say in here what other book was? Oh. Hold on, I'm going to have to... <laughs> oh, it's going to bug me. Where does it say her other book? I read the other book and it was like the... It doesn't say... Oh, it's going to bug me now. Anyway, she did another book that was really famous and I read it and they turned it into a TV show and I liked it. And anyway... Oh, it's going to bug me now. Does it say on the front what it's called? No. If anyone's watching this, you'll be like, it's blah, blah, blah. It's... I don't know what it is, but it, she did a famous book and anyway... So that's that one, but I've got that to sell on eBay. Uh, by the way, if any of these books you like the look of, they'll be going on my eBay this weekend. So look out for them and happy bidding. Right, so next up, I picked up, this really bugged me. I can't remember the name of that blooming book. I would ask Nathan to look on his phone, but he's playing his game, so he can't. I don't know if he's got his headphones on. Um, anyway, <laughs> sorry. Right, next up, I've got these to sell. Um, on eBay however when I was having a little look at them I thought they look pretty cool actually so I'm still going to sell them on eBay but I might actually have a look at a couple of them and like read myself so they're graphic novels uh, which I do like from time to time but they're manga um, which I don't really I'm not into like anime and manga and stuff like that like Nathan is really into anime and stuff and I've tried but I just I don't know I just can't connect with anime um, but these are I think, well, some of them are part of a series, some aren't, I think. You've got Othello, you've got, I don't even want to try and say the names of some of these, because I say the same wrong. Uh, Tusubaka? No. Tusubasa? Tusubasa? <laughs> I don't know, sorry. Um, there's another one there. But the one that I'm interested in, in having a look at is this one, uh, because, quite frankly, I think the cover is really cool. Like, I just think it sounds good. And... Um, this is the one, I'm, as I say, I'm going to sell, obviously, all of them, but I might keep this first and read and then sell it on. So, um, yeah, it's it's all about, like, uh, this character who's haunted by visions of ghosts and spirits. Then he encounters this mysterious witch who claims that she can help. Um, do, 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 do. Desperation accepts, but realises that he's been tricked into working for Yoko in order to pay off the cost of her services. Soon he's employed in a little shop, a job that turns out to be nothing like his previous work experience. Um, look, you know, I don't know. Will I like it? Will I not? I'm not sure. But that cover is so damn cool. I could not give it a little try. And it's just like, you know, it's not going to take me long to get through. Like, it's, you know, a graphic novel. And, yeah, I'm going to try that one. And maybe um, there's another one. Othello, I thought, looked pretty cool as well. Um, but we shall see. We shall see. If not, they're, they're going on eBay anyway. But, um, yeah, 50p each. That was a bargain, wasn't it? Uh, let me know in the comments section down below if you're into like manga and graphic novels or, you know, stuff like that and anime. Um, as I say, I do like reading graphic novels now and again. Um, I've got a few that I still haven't read, but like, I don't know, I have to be in a certain mood to uh, to look at like graphic novels. There's a graphic novel that I really, really want to get, but it's like £10 and it's not that big. It's like that thick and I'm thinking, don't really want to spend like £10 on it. Maybe I can just find it cheaper somewhere eventually. Um, it's called The Sad Ghost Club or something or Lonely Ghost Club or something like that. And uh, it's all it's all about um, anxiety basically. But I think they use like ghosts to, you know, discuss anxiety and stuff. So that's why I'm quite interested in it. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> anyway, the next book I got on eBay as well. This is for me. Um, obviously, you know, if I, I will be selling it afterwards, but I had not heard of this book. I was on Goodreads and it was one of those kind of, uh, if you like this book, you should read that book kind of recommendation thing. And it's called The Intimacy Experiment uh, by Rosie Denan. Apparently she wrote a book called The Roommate that I've not heard of, to be fair, but, you know, there it is. There's a picture on the back. There's The Roommate. Um, but yeah, this just sounded really fun for me. 
and um you know i do like my romances sometimes i'm not a big like romance reader i like lots of different books but you know romance isn't up on my like top five but i do like it at the same point if that makes sense um so this one says naomi grant has built a life around going against the grain when the sex positive startup she co-founded becomes an international sensation her responsibilities shift from the bedroom to the boardroom <laughs> sorry i really like that the bedroom to the boardroom anyway um ready to conquer new worlds naomi wants to extend her platform to live uh, to, sorry to live to live lecturing <laughs> to live lecturing uh, live lecturing but despite her long list of qualifications higher education won't hire her then we have Ethan Cohen, who's recently received two honours. LA Mag named him one of the city's hottest bachelors, and he became rabbi of his own synagogue. Unfortunately, his shawl is low on both funds and, con and um, congregants. I can't say that word. Congregants. <laughs> what is this video turning into? Sorry. Um, no one wants to go to the synagogue, basically. There we go. Um, so the board gives him three months to turn things around or they'll close the doors for good. Together, Naomi and Ethan host a buzzy seminar series on modern intimacy, the perfect solution to their problems until they discover a new one. They grow in attraction to each other. They've built the syllabus for love's latest experiment, but neither of them expected they'd be the ones putting it to the test. I just think this sounds really fun. I love the fact that he's like a hot, sexy rabbi. She's like this, you know, girl who's been doing all the ooh la la stuff and then she's like getting into like the ballroom and, and you know presentations and stuff and yeah I think it sounds cool it's supposed to be quite funny as well some of the reviews I read of it have said it's a little bit saucy which you know okay I'm cool with that um now the next book here is not actually for me uh this is a gift for Nathan my fiance uh, I probably will have a little look through it with him to be fair so it's kind of for me <laughs> but no it's for him so I saw this in Waterstones and it was like well expensive so I looked on eBay and basically found it cheaper um I mean it is second hand but apart from a tiny little crease there on the corner you would not know like it looks in really good condition and it is all about Thames mudlarking searching for London's lost treasures um, and one day like i really would love to go with nathan and do some mud larking like i think it'd be so much fun and interesting um like you know it's just there's so many old things to be found and you know it's just oh it's fascinating i mean in this book we had a little uh quick look through before and there's like old coins medals pipes like just just really cool stuff from like you know so long ago um so yeah this book is is basically all about things that um have been found i mean even from the cover you can see different bits and pieces there you know so i love it it's like to find something really dirty and then clean it up and just you know look into the history of it and stuff so anyway i got it for him as a gift but i will be definitely looking for it and one day i'd like to um i'd like to do it we also like at some point would love to get like a metal detector and go like on the beach and like in fields and stuff and find loads of treasure <laughs> anyway right, the next book i've got to sell on ebay it's called space 10 things you should know by dr becky smethurst there we go how pretty is this cover though that's all shiny um this isn't the sort of book i would read so hence i'm uh, selling it on ebay but it literally looked in like perfect condition and um yeah it says 14 billion years for people short on time 10 things you should know yeah this isn't my cup of tea you know I, I don't really read um factual books i'm more of a fictiony kind of girl um which is really weird because like when it comes to tv i prefer watching like real like documentaries and stuff they're like my favorite types of shows to watch um but when it comes to books i only like reading fiction <laughs> so who knows who knows but um yeah i thought this was a lovely little book and i hope you know someone will buy it on ebay uh, next up, ah, this is, yeah, this is really cute. Look at this little book. Oh, my days. So this is like a little quick read version of um, Breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capote, is that? Or Capote? Capote? I don't know. I'm terrible at names. I, I can't pronounce names. Um, I saw this and uh, it was 50p and it's it's just beautiful. Like, it's so, like, just so cute. Like, I just, anyway... I have never seen Breakfast at Tiffany's, which is really random because, you know, I'm a girl and, you know, <laughs> most girls have seen 
breakfast at Tiffany's at some point in their life, and I haven't, and I feel embarrassed to say that. Apparently, it's supposed to be the most romantic story ever written, so we'll see. But yeah, this is like a nice little quick read version of it. I love the cover. Um, if I like it, I'll probably keep this one because it's just so cute and it's only thin like i can just put it in my bookcase um but yeah i was really like excited to see that <laughs> it's really cute anyway so what does it say um let me know in the comments section by the way if you've read breakfast at tiffany's or seen the film meet holly holly go lightly <laughs> a free-spirited lopsided romantic girl about town with her tousled blonde hair and upturned nose dark glasses and chic black dresses Holly is a style sensation wherever she goes. Her apartment rocks to martini-soaked parties and she plays hostess to millionaires and gangsters alike. Yet, Holly never loses sight of her ultimate dream to find a real-life place like Tiffany's that makes her feel at home. Oh, that actually, actually sounds really cute. I know, obviously, the scene where she's sitting there and stuff, but I, don't, I just don't know anything about the story or anything. So, make you fall in love, perhaps, for the first time with a book. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's set in the 1940s New York. Large and life characters. Hmm. Sharp wit. I do like a bit of sharp wit. Yeah, this is like a little penguin classic. So, yeah, I'm really happy with that one. All right, next up. Now, this book, um, this is for me, stroke eBay. Okay, so this is one that, you know, I will be selling. I mean, eventually when I start it, if, if I'm not feeling it, I will just sell it straight away. But if I do like it, I'll obviously read it all and then I'll put it on. But this is the deluxe edition. I got it for 150 and it's brand new. Look, literally brand spanking new hardback edition. I'll take the label off. I hate, I know they've got a stick stickers on, but I just, I can't stand people sticking. Oh, look, see, it's, get off there. Um, Yeah, anyway, as I'm unsticking this, uh, it's called Queenie. And it's by Kimberly Chambers. It's only been out, I think, it only come out like this year. Um, I always see it whenever I'm in bookshops and stuff. I always like I'm drawn to it um, because it's set in Whitechapel in London, where I was actually raised uh, as a little girl. My mum and her family are from Whitechapel, so I would always be in Whitechapel. My grandparents lived there, and they helped raise me and stuff. Uh, so the fact that this is based in the old like East End it just sounds cool. It says, "Meet the mother of the gangsters." Um, this is a really cool, like, I can show you the artwork under here. Hold on. Um, but, yeah, I, I'd looked at this book before, and for some reason I just didn't get it because it's, I think, it's because it's not really my genre of book to read. There you go. You see that? It's really cool, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's just not, oh, there's a signature there. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's just not my kind of thing I would normally read, but sometimes I like reading books that are out of my comfort zone. And also, I generally uh, think this book sounds pretty cool. So uh, it says she was made in the East End. Um, for young Queenie, life in the back streets of Whitechapel was a lesson in survival. Hitler's bombs hit those with nothing the hardest. When danger strikes close to home, Queenie finds an ally in Mrs O'Leary, whose two sons are the kingpins of the East End. But while the O'Learys are the light in Queenie's life, fate has a different path in store. Uh, now married to the useless Albie Butler, Queenie is raising her children to fight their own battles. If the O'Leary's taught her anything, it was that surviving meant doing sorry, if, if sorry, it was that surviving meant doing whatever you had to do, no questions asked, and that family always comes first. The Butler boys will make sure their mother's name becomes East End legend. Meet Queenie, this is her story. So um yeah, as I say, it's not my normal type of book, but I'm really fascinated by it, and I love the fact that it's, like, in the old East End and stuff. But if I give it a go and I'm not feeling it, then it would just be, like, it's straight on eBay. So, <laughs> yeah, but how cool is that, like, to get a brand-new hardback deluxe edition in a charity shop? Um, right, the next one I've got for eBay. This isn't for me. And I know there's a lot of people watching this who will be fans of this author. It's Jacqueline Wilson. Um, I can honestly say I've never read a Jacqueline Wilson book and I don't know why I think maybe it's because uh, she was for like a younger generation than me like when I was a kid I I honestly don't remember books by her whereas like people who are younger than me kind of grew up with her books and maybe I was maybe too old to get into it anyway you know what I'm saying right but yeah she's um she's done this book here it's called my secret diary and this is like a special edition you get like this little cover for it and this is the actual book it's a hardback book i mean i always see jacqueline wilson books and thinks that think they're really cute and really pretty little covers and stuff um so inside there's all these like photographs and stuff which i do think is pretty cool 
but yeah i don't know i don't know i assume this is about her life and stuff i assume i don't know because there's all photos of her so i suppose it must be um but yeah if you are a fan of jacqueline wilson and you you, you know you're after it it is going on the ebay um but yeah i got that for 50p so it's like result okay so next up i have a couple of thrillers which i couldn't believe i got for 50p each um, and they're both by the same author which is shari la penna now i honestly don't know is shari la penna a man or a woman because like, i just don't know not that it matters like seriously but anyway i'm just eager to know if it's a man or a woman so i read the couple next door ages ago and absolutely loved it it was a very good thriller i was like Ugh. yeah really enjoyed that book so I managed to get these two, 50p each, and uh, this one's the hardback as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, it says it's called The End of Her. It might just be The End of Her by Sherry LePenna, and this one's called An Unwanted Guest. There's no escape. I love the fact that her covers, or his covers, I don't know, their covers, um, are quite similar. Like, even the couple next door, it's like that kind of bluey colour. They obviously must go with, like, the theme of that colour for their books, like bluey, greeny colours um like similar kind of imagery and stuff um so it makes their books like quite recognizable you know so let me tell you what they are about so the first one is an unwanted guest this is the little paperback version um we can't choose the strangers we meet as the guests arrive at the beautiful remote mitchell's inn they're all looking forward to a relaxing weekend deep in the forest miles from anywhere they watch their fellow guests with interest from a pol from police <laughs> from a polite distance i'm not with it today sorry from a polite distance not a police distance anyway uh with a violent storm raging the group finds itself cut off from the outside world nobody can get in or out and then the first body's found and the horrifying truth comes to light there is a killer among them and nowhere to run until we find ourselves trapped in a situation we can't escape trapped yeah i mean i've read similar books to this before um where they're all kind of in a house and it's obviously got to be one of them's the murderer um i like it i like books like that and especially because it's set in like the middle of a forest and stuff like it's, i think that sounds really cool so that is that the other one what is that about the end of her uh, it starts with a shocking accusation. Stephanie and Patrick are recently married with newborn twins. While Stephanie struggles with the disorientating effects of sleep deprivation, uh, there's one thing she knows for certain. She has everything she ever wanted. Then a woman from Patrick's past arrives and makes a horrifying allegation. He always claimed his first wife's death was an accident, but she says it was murder. Uh, he insists he's innocent, that this is nothing but a blackmail attempt. But is Patrick telling the truth or has Stephanie made a terrible mistake? How will it end? Oh, OK. So did he kill his ex-wife? Did he not? You know, how will it end up for this current woman, Stephanie? Um, yeah, I think it sounds cool. The end of her. <laughs> I've got a feeling he probably did. I mean, I haven't read it, obviously. I don't know. But, you know, he probably did. Or maybe he didn't. Maybe he's innocent. You know, who are we to judge until we read it? So, yeah, I love a good thriller. So I was excited to get that. Now, the last book I want to show you. And you're probably like, yes, because you're probably getting really bored by now. Maybe you're not. I don't know. <laughs> so hopefully you're not getting bored. Um, this book, poor Nathan, he's had to hear this story like a few times because I'm mega excited about this one. So as I was telling you at the beginning of the video, um, I'm currently reading a book called Circus of Wonders. And I couldn't remember the name of the author, but it is Eliz Elizabeth McNeil. And I know that because she also wrote this book right here. Um, so basically this book is her first one the doll factory and i remember seeing it ages ago and i was like should i get it should i not and I, and I ended up not getting it for some reason anyway so that's that and then i've literally just started reading circus wonders and i blooming love it it's sensational i'm so like into it it's so good and i thought you know what i do want to read the doll factory and i also looked up and apparently the doll factory is going to get turned into a tv series which is pretty cool so um i thought you know what later on today this is what i thought this morning i thought i'm gonna just go on waterstones or look on ebay you know whatever and get the doll factory because i, I just love this woman's writing style go in the charity shop boom here it is one pound i kid you not one pound and it literally looks new look i think that is a new book i mean you can never tell 100 percent, but i think that is brand new hardback edition as well Huh, look at the gorgeous cover like seriously look at that cover it's just beautiful um so i'm so happy because i haven't got to buy it like 
you know well i bought it but like cheap <laughs> there's all the butterflies inside um and yeah i can get to read it obviously before it you know becomes a tv show i'm just looking at the cover oh it's just plain black okay i thought it was going to have a cute cover like the um the circus of wonders has a really gorgeous cover under the dust jacket but that's just like plain black so anyway uh, but this cover's nice so that makes up for it so let me tell you what it is about it says it's so it's set in london 1850 the greatest spectacle the city has ever seen is being built in Hyde Park and among the crowd watching the two, pe two people meet. For Iris, an aspiring artist, it is the encounter of a moment, forgotten seconds later. But for Silas, a collector entranced by the strange and beautiful, that meeting marks a new beginning. When Iris is asked to model for pre-Raphaelite, I can't say this word, Raphaelite, <laughs> how do you say Raphaelite? Ra Raphaelite. Oh, that's good. He didn't have his headphones on. Hi, oh, Sandy. Thank you. Pre-Raphaelite. There we go. Um, artist Louis Frost. She agrees on the condition that he will also teach her to paint. Suddenly, her world begins to expand to become a place of art and love. But Silas has only thought of one thing since their meeting, and his obsession is darkening. So, yeah, he's, he's quite, like, obsessed with her and stuff. Uh, it's supposed to be rich, story, mesmerising set in the vivid chaos of victorian london i love reading victorian london stories um passionate love story thrilling tale of one woman's determination to break free so yeah i mean it doesn't sound as good as a circus of wonders but i think that's because i'm like into my circus books and stuff but it does sound really cool um so yeah Whee! i got it i couldn't believe it when you just honestly I really recommend to anyone who goes like charity shopping and stuff and if you're a bookworm look in these like shops because you can get some great books not only are they cheap for you to buy but also the money that you do buy goes to charity so you know it's a win-win all round um anyway that's the end of the video thank you for watching and uh please click like comment share subscribe check out minx laura 123 asmr my other youtube channel uh links down below to that all the links to my uh social media links they're they're all down below as well i'm so not with it today sorry um but yeah thank you for watching and i do have a goodreads page so down below you can see the link to that so if you want to follow me see what books i've read want to read etc you can find out on there um but yeah okay everyone and let me know in the comment section down below what book you are currently reading and uh if you're enjoying it not enjoying it or if there's any books coming out soon that you're excited for uh, the book that i'm most anticipating like i'm really mega hyper excited for is the new uh, taylor jenkins read book which is called malibu rising i've got that on pre-order so the day well hopefully the day it comes out i should have it in my hands i'm hoping i mean normally waterstones are really good with their delivery service like it turns up pretty much on the day or if not the next day but yeah i i just can't i love i love her book so much anyway thank you for watching i'll see you soon Happy reading. Bye.